Next on BYU Sports Nation, here's a loaded question. Should Zach Wilson have started as the BYU quarterback sooner? While we're talking about Zach Wilson, is it time to pump the brakes on the comparisons with him? Plus, would bowling versus Bronco Mendenhall be a good thing for BYU? Hashtag Independence Times 2. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, wherever and however you are connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who can actually decipher Kawhi Leonard's laugh, Jerem Jordan. There was a video that came out of the NBA on NBC to it was Kawhi's laugh manipulated to be the notes of that. And da, that's da, like da, 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 the da. funniest thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I NBA, think we happy both, NBA Day. Yeah, I think we both I retweeted it or quote tweeted it. Love it. If you want to see it, yes. Anything with the NBA on NBC. Go, go to like, Twitter. <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's my favorite theme song of all time. I want to hear that laugh again right now. <laughs> It's so bad. It's, it's very unique. At, le- at least he did laugh. Yes, like we know that he can laugh. He's been in the Marriott Center a bunch of times, and I interviewed him before Jimmer's All Stars when yeah. the NBA was mm-hmm. locked out. Right, like the quietest, shyest guy with he has like the like Jeff Chapman thinks that Kawhi Leonard has big hands. Yes, you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. the like I was like, oh my gosh, she could like palm my head like a like a grapefruit or something. You know, just massive hands. Kawhi Leonard, friend of Jimmer Fredette. Are they friends? <laughs> Not when they were playing against each other. I don't, I don't other. know about that one, man. I don't know. <laughs> we now, oh, actually, let's get to today's show lineup. We have a mystery guest, Jerem, coming up in 15 minutes. Normally we know the guests beforehand. Like our producer, Ben Bagg, is like, hey, we have a mystery guest. We're like, who is it? He's like, I'm not telling you. I'm not. He, okay. I'm like, why aren't so, you telling us? Should, I have my, I have we my be, guesses. Should we be nervous? <laughs> I have my guesses. <laughs> About said mystery guest? I'm hoping it's one person. I'm hoping it's not another, <laughs> if you catch my drift. I, who are you hoping that it is? Yeah, Steve Young after <laughs> a great Monday Night Football game. Okay. He's, he's jumping into Lambeau. Like, That's a potential. Like Steve on, talk about Why that. was Steve jumping into Lambeau after his 49ers lost? He wasn't after. It was before. Oh, it was before. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I thought you were saying he jumped into Lambeau after the game was over. Great no. game, by the way. Featuring Jamal Williams and Fred Warner. Yeah, nice job, Richard Sherman. Oh, he they forced ba- a punt, and, get, and then he gets stiff-armed like a, Jamal Williams was dribbling a basketball. Yes. Boom! Right into the turf. Lauren McLean will take us on a tour of the new Richards Building Pool with yeah. the swim and dive team on Between the Lines in 30 Minutes. That has been a long time coming. I know they're super excited to have that resource now. I, oh, I thought you meant Between the Lines. I was like, well, didn't they shoot it recently? No, I'm... The pool. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm happy for the parking lot, too. Oh, It was a grief. disaster, man. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. We now present today's Any BYU Sports BYU. Nation headlines. BYU football in the midst of the bye week following a decisive victory over Hawaii on Saturday night. Head coach Kalani Satake joined BYU Sports Nation yesterday right here in Studio B and laid out the plan for the bye week. And try to get stronger and better this week as well. Also get caught up in our academics. Um, but uh, this isn't just like time to just take off. We have to get to work, and we start with today. Do your homework. Get your lift in. Get some rest where you can. College football reporter Brett McMurphy projects BYU versus Virginia. What? In the Independence Bowl. What? Is this the perfect matchup or what? Yes. That would feature BYU's last head coach against its current head coach. More on that coming up. So many levels to that potential matchup. Independence Bowl. In the NFL, Jamal Williams had six rushes for 29 yards and one brutal stiff arm of Richard Sherman. He also caught a pass for 10 yards in the Green Bay Packers. Thrilling 33-30 win over San Francisco on Monday night. For the 49ers, rookie Fred Warner had three solo tackles, four total. BYU women's volleyball remains number one in the ABCA coaches poll following wins at San Francisco and Santa Clara last week. Cougars host LMU and 7-1 and one in West Coast Conference play Pepperdine Thursday and Saturday, both on BYU TV and the app. Just keep winning. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. 
You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. How good was Zach Wilson and BYU's entire offense, for that matter, against Hawaii in Wilson's inaugural start as the youngest BYU quarterback in program history, 19 years, two months, and a few days. He did not disappoint. Again, his offense did a lot to help him so that he would not disappoint. But it now has some people asking, well, wait a second. Um, Zach was good against Hawaii, so what if Zach had played against, I don't know, Utah State or um, maybe Washington? Then what? Which prompts this question, Jerem. Should BYU have started Zach Wilson at quarterback sooner than the Hawaii game? I do not believe that. No. I think Zach Wilson started at the perfect time. Here's why. Perhaps BYU beats Cal with more of a run threat and a pass threat from Zach, but it's bigger than that, Kay. I think Zach Wilson needed six games on the sideline, on the headset, in practice, um, to get the offense a little more, to understand the pre-snap reads, to feel comfortable at this level, to go through the motions of what it is to be a D1 quarterback, to sit and watch and not have to play against four power fives, three on the road. I think that Tanner Mangum played a good game at Arizona. He managed the game at Wisconsin. He already lost the Cal game because there was no run game. Mangum wasn't getting it done through the air through two picks. BYU lost to Utah State because the defense couldn't stop the Aggies' offense. I don't care who the quarterback is probably in that game. I think Zach Wilson needed six games. I also think he needed Hawaii's defense to be comfortable. BYU ran for 280. This made the job much easier for Zach Wilson. I'm not saying it was easy, but I'm saying I think that Zach Wilson needed the time he had on the sideline and and to be coached by uh, Jeff Grimes and Tanner Mangum to be successful against Hawaii. People. How many times do we have to see it in history that being the backup quarterback can be a very beneficial thing for a lot of guys that might have incredible talent and all of the skill set, but they just need a little bit more time to understand the speed of the game and every little intricacy that goes into being the quarterback. Did it work for Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? Yes. How about Tom Brady? Did he benefit sitting behind Drew Brees? Yes. Did Steve Young benefit Drew sitting Bledsoe. behind? Sorry, Drew Bledsoe. Did Steve Young benefit sitting behind Joe Montana? Admittedly, yes. Steve said I hated a lot of it, but it was beneficial for me to be on the headset with all of those talented offensive coordinators the 49ers had and Bill Walsh. So yes, it is beneficial. Tanner Mangum was the right decision to start the season. I wouldn't throw Zach Wilson out there against four power fives in the first five weeks. Good grief. Tanner Mangum won, helped BYU win at Arizona. He helped BYU win at Wisconsin. No, it didn't go well against Washington and Utah State. But then BYU had the luxury of going to Zach Wilson, who was now six games into the season and understood those pre-snap reads that you brought up and all the little things that go into it. This was the right decision to go with Zach at this juncture of the season and not earlier. Tanner Mangum was the right decision at the beginning of the season. After Zach Wilson's first start as the Cougar, there have been a few comparisons. Taysom Hill was one. Blaine Fowler called him a young Jim McMahon, among others. Spencer, are these Zach Wilson comparisons out there fair? No, please, just slow down. Just slow it down for one moment. I will say this about Blaine Fowler comparing Zach Wilson to a young Jim McMahon. They both run well. They are both... That's, the same that's the thing people forget about Jim McMahon. There, yes. He Jim was a fantastic athlete. Also a punter. He was a good runner with the ball. He gained a bunch of yards with his legs and avoided a ton of sacks. So I think that's where Blaine was going. Blaine's not saying, Zach Wilson is Jim McMahon. He no. looks like a young Jim Yes, McMahon. his ability Blaine to moves. run the ball, yeah, sure. his ability to move in the pocket, and he's brash, and he's got some moxie early on. He's really confident in his abilities. All similar to what Jim McMahon presented. So when Blaine Fowler says a young Jim McMahon, he literally is saying like Jim McMahon when he made his first start. Just his yeah. the, his his sure. height, his weight, the whole physical makeup of Zach Wilson 
and his skill set is similar to a young Jim McMahon. I've never seen young Jim McMahon play, so I'll just take Blaine's uh, word for it, and I take Blaine's word for it a lot. But don't – I mean, but it, it's, it's Hill extended just, to Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill's way Oh, up. he leaped just, a defender. He's Taysom Hill. Oh, there's like a 30-pound difference between <laughs> Zach Wilson and Taysom Hill. Just because someone runs and passes doesn't mean they're so. He's but no he Michael leaped Vick. a defender, like, Jerem. Yeah, that, no, slow down. It's it's one game. He's definitely not Taysom Hill. Okay, young Jim McMahon. Perhaps I, I take Blaine's word for it. I, I listen. Later we can in the off season we can fill the Zach Wilson hype train up with hyperbole and massive expectations that won't be met. Like that's what we do, right? Um, Rare is the guy that we pump up and then he lives up to the hype. I don't want to do that. I just want to enjoy and ease into the Zach Wilson era because that's what it appears to be. Zach Wilson will start next week against Northern Illinois, and then he's going to play against the team that 10 months ago and three days ago he decommitted from in Boise State. Love that. So there's a tremendous storyline there. You get a couple of other games in UMass and New Mexico State, and then a huge one at Utah. And you hope Zach's healthy and he's thriving and the BYU offense is doing work, and then maybe BYU ends that streak well, against one of the nation's top defenses on the road. Not expecting it. But, uh, yeah, I think all these comparisons, they, they're fun or whatever. The Taysom Hill one is just blatantly off. But, uh, yeah, whatever. It's one game. It's early, man. I've heard John Beck as well, and that's probably because Zach worked with John Beck right. on they're his not, own accord. He went out of his way to reach out to John. And, and John wasn't a runner. No. Well, John actually, John, was a precision John actually came to BYU as a guy that picked up a lot of yards out of high school with his feet. Right, but I wouldn't call him a runner in college at all. No, well, especially when he had bad ankles his senior year. He was not running a bunch, but... The comparisons of, oh, he's he's precise, his ability to throw timing sure. routes, stand tall quick in the release. pocket. Yes, yeah, quick sure. release. Let's just slow down a little bit. Taysom Hill ones are just those Slow are just down a little bit. <laughs> uh, speaking of slowing down, how many of you had Matt Hadley as BYU's leading rusher in the Hawaii game? Raise your hands, everyone. Okay, now put them down. You're lying. You're all lying. Nobody had wow. Matt Hadley as the leading rusher against Hawaii. Hadley family did. He was no. I don't even think the Hadley family did. I'm going to talk to him. Please do. I talked to Spencer on Sunday. If they say that they had him as a leading rusher, they're lying. Nine <laughs> yards short of 100, 91 yards, and on a few carries, all of a sudden he's pushed himself into the conversation of deserving the ball more. Give him the rock. And don't take it from me. Take it from the head ball coach, Kalani Satake. Staff, I, I think he's proven that he can really uh, run the ball, and he has good vision, and we'll see if uh, how it plays into the next game. But uh, I imagine he should be a guy that gets heavy consideration to be a starter. Okay, so Jerem, fresh off a game led by Matt Hadley in the rushing department, who is the best running back at BYU right now on Tuesday, October 16th? Zach Wilson? Oh, wait, he's not a running back. Stop it. Um, okay, let's evaluate this one. Is there one? Because there's several good ones. I don't know that there's like, there has to be the best, I guess. Squally Canada. He's shown he can be a 100-plus guy when he's healthy, but he's not healthy. So I don't know if it's Squally right now. Lupini Katoa averaging 4.8 a carry. I like what Lupini's doing. I really do as a freshman. However, his longest rush is 16 yards in seven games on 55 carries. I would think that he would have broken out a couple 20-plusers at this point. Or just, I, I don't know, I, I like Lopini. Um, is he the best one? I don't know. Matt Hadley has 12 carries, that's it. Okay, Nine came in the Hawaii game. And a really nice yards per carry average, which brings us to our stat of the day. Mm-hmm. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Matt Hadley averages 9.5 yards per carry. Well, the 20-yarder against McNeese helps with that as well. Yes, it does. 12 carries, 114, 9.5 a carry. Had a 39-yarder in the Hawaii game. Um, it's hard. To, I, I still think it's Squally Canada. Yes. Like if he's yep. if he's decently healthy, he's the best running back BYU has. He's a Power Five running back. Literally, he was at Washington State and then transferred to BYU. Right. Um, I think BYU has some good ones, and it certainly sounds from Kalani Stocky right there that Matt Hadley will be more of an option to this point of the season. Looking at all of the big runs that BYU has had. No one has hit the hole faster than Squally Canada and broken out those big runs. Two notable against Wisconsin, right? 44 and 46. But it's all dependent on his health. If Squally Canada is healthy, and I don't, I don't think he will be fully healthy all season because he's dealing with lingering ankle issues. But if he can get up to 85 or 90 percent and he's feeling okay and hopefully the bye week helps him yeah. rest up a lot so that he's good to go against Northern Illinois, 
then Squally Canada is BYU's number one option at running back. He rarely loses yards, Jerem. Yeah. I think he lost yards against Utah State. This he, year he has 19 yards lost. That's he right. was not right against Utah State. He did not it have It wasn't the, a lot. He did not right. have the explos- explosion that he usually has. He hits, he hits the open hole faster than any other BYU running back right now. Matt Hadley probably next. And then Lopini Cato is the – I think he's the most physical – Runner, yeah, I like I like right Lopini. I I want to see longer rushes from him. But yeah. Riley Burt's a violent runner too. We just don't have a ton to go off of. But I think Lopini is the physical guy. Squally hits the hole hard, and then Matt Hadley has kind of been this new revelation. We'll we'll see what happens there. But right, get Squally healthy. I think he'll be much more healthy going into the Northern Illinois game. He's the number one running back. College football insider Brett McMurphy put out some bold projections yesterday that included a matchup between BYU and the Fighting Broncos of Virginia oh, in the Independence Bowl on December 27th. Interesting. Is a bowl matchup between BYU and Virginia a good idea? <laughs> Absolutely it's a good idea. Can you imagine the buildup to that game if it actually came to fruition and how many tickets that bowl game would sell? And well, A lot of, from Virginia. What kind of – yes. How many BYU fans are descending upon Louisiana? <laughs> Every – LD, or sorry, every we, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints that's a BYU fan in the south part of the United States. Well, we went to the Miami Beach Bowl. There wasn't a ton of fans there. Well, Miami's a little bit different than Louisiana. I know. Louisiana's I cent- know. centralized. I know. At least that's centralized. So you can have people come from Texas and from Oklahoma and all those states. Yeah, so okay, it it's oh. a little bit different. The point is, the game would sell a bunch of tickets. It would probably bring in pretty good ratings, and, and the buildup would be amazing. I, Bronco doesn't want it. I guarantee you Bronco wants no part well, he of left, the Independence Well, he left, so yeah, he doesn't Bowl. want it. And he's already, it, he's already tried to move the games. It would be compelling and rich for sure. I would love to see this. I think it'd be fun. It'd get really awkward fast, plus we could talk with Bronco, Hall again, and it'd get really awkward fast. No! It'd be a sixth Power 5 game for BYU, and UVA's 4-2 and two, beat Miami last week. That was a big win. I would love this, man. I love those Virginia BYU guys. They're all I, two J and Atuaya, Papinga, Beck, all those guys. Soto, Edwards. I love those are. That's the crew, man. So what's the bad part about this? No Is there part. any bad, bad part, part about a potential awesome. matchup? No, it'd be awesome. I mean, other than Bronco probably not wanting it, <laughs> maybe a few of the other guys on his staff. I would it'd love. Be, it'd be dope in the Independence Bowl, no yeah. less. Yeah. Listen, there are a lot of lot of bad matchups and whatever bowl games that BYU could play in. That's not one of them against Virginia. That'd be great. In the Independence Bowl. That'd be great. You cannot write this stuff. Well, Brett did, actually. He wrote it. Well, he projected it. He it. Whatever. You and your technicalities. If it, it actually right, happened, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Question of the day. Would you want BYU to face Bronco Mendenhall and Virginia in a bowl game in the Independence Bowl? Makes it even better. Why? Let's go to the Voice of the Nation. Independence. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Levi Pace 31 on Twitter. Yes, it's always a good thing to bring some feelings to a game. No doubt both teams would seriously prepare for this one. Well, Virginia and Bronco, knowing what he's done... He would prepare regardless of the opponent, but there would be some extra juice for now, sure. Now I'm wondering how many feelings I bring to each game. That's what I'm questioning now. It's always good to bring some feelings to a game. Did I bring feelings? to set it? Anyway, coming up, a behind-the-scenes tour of the new Richards Building pool with the swim and dive team via Between the Lines. And next, mystery guest. Have we ever done this before on the show? Like, officially labeled that our next guest is a mystery guest? one other time. <laughs> one other time. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're being told by our producer that we it's just showed who it was on the screen. around for. We did? Yes. I missed it. It's, this is BYU Sports what? Nation. It's Dennis? Come on. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tonight, break down the Cougars' win against Hawaii with the coaches' all-22 film with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and David Nixon on After Further Review. It's tonight, 7 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Live from Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Listen to BYUSN On Demand by downloading the BYU Sports Nation podcast. You can always watch the show by going to BYUSN.com and experience BYU Sports Nation whenever, wherever, and however you want. Our question of the day. Would you want BYU football to face Bronco Mendenhall and Virginia in a bowl game? 
right now projected by Brett McMurphy of Stadium Sports to match up in the Independence Bowl. So perfect. At Nick Lee 51 answers on Twitter. Yes, because that would mean BYU is playing a Power 5 team in a bowl game this year. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, I would have taken that situation in a heartbeat. Yeah, I, I think it'd be good. It's a really compelling matchup. You know, other than playing Utah again, which would be weird. I think Virginia is an awesome fit for the all the obvious reasons. Yeah. And, and playing a Power 5 is always next level. Uh, BYU's independent schedule is kind of like playing a bowl game each and every week in some instances, right? Play a bunch of teams. It's good to tell yourself that because there's no context. Well, you yeah. know, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. a positive. It's a positive. Today, we decided it was about time that uh, – we bring in the mystery guest factor, and he was well, a mystery that, that until about three or four minutes ago. <laughs> um, mystery guest joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Uh, Jerem, there's only one former BYU football player that gets his name mentioned on the show every day, and True. it's this guy. True. Please introduce yourself, mystery guest. <laughs> Hello, Jerem. <laughs> Hello, Dennis. <laughs> it, it's time. You finally have time for me. I... <sighs> I'll I'll stay here for this interview. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Wow, that quickly. I know, right? Now we're best friends. I'm no, putting no. on my be- I'm putting on my best face. Little do people know that you and I are actually like best friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for show. We hang out all the time. Yeah. yeah. Mark Lyons last week said you need to make time for Dennis Pitta. Yeah, there are a lot of people, Dennis, yeah. that are like, hey, why why do you guys do that? That's I don't. It's rude. I don't it's, think it's people, not cool. I don't think people get the Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> Matt Damon <laughs> gag, do they? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. think you're hurting my feelings, which you are, but. <laughs> I, uh, I've always been the sensitive I got tough skin. I'm able to get through it. <laughs> Dennis, I want to bring up something that happened uh, in week number one against Arizona because I want you to share your perspective on on. The, oh yeah, let's talk about the this. Austin yeah. Collie situation, uh, convincing Kalani Satake to challenge a call that it was uh, on a punt. It hit an Arizona player and thus was a live ball and should have been BYU's ball. What what did you see in that situation? Well, I'm glad we're putting this all on Austin Colley because I was equally to blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I agree. It was totally Austin's fault. And so, so Austin, myself, Chad Lewis, we're all kind of standing pretty much right where the ball came down on that particular punt. And all three of us swore we saw it hit the foot of one of the Arizona uh, defenders. And, I mean – it looked like it completely. The way the ball bounced, it came down right from our perspective, right on his foot. So we were screaming. We were yelling. We were pointing. And Kalani started looking right over at us, and we were animated. And, and Austin tells a funny story about it. They locked eyes, and uh, all of a sudden Kalani throws the challenge flag, and they review it. And in the stadium, we're looking at the Jumbotron, and they're showing replays where it looks like it hits the foot. And so we're all fired up, like, yeah, we – we're going to win this game for BYU. Because of that here. <laughs> and, and, of course, you watch the TV copy at home, and it's not even close. It lands like two yards to the left of the guy's foot. But for whatever reason, in the stadium, we were convinced that it happened. So, fortunately, they didn't lose the game for BYU. Yeah. But terrible call by Austin. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> if BYU had needed a timeout down the stretch, oh, my gosh, that would have been epically bad, you know? Okay. Yeah, it would have, and we were getting nervous because that game started to get close at the end, but we pulled it in. <laughs> we received. Uh, BYU beats Hawaii. A much-needed breath of f- offensive fresh air for BYU as the Cougars make the switch to Zach Wilson. What did you think of the youngest quarterback in BYU history to start a game's performance? Well, it, it was refreshing to see, number one, uh, the offense be able to explode like they did against Hawaii. And I think everybody after that Utah State game was so down on BYU football, myself included, to lose like that at home against Utah State, and I hate to bring it back up, it was just such a low point this season. And so to be able to rebound like this, and I think Kalani made the right move, inserting Zach Wilson in the starting lineup because this team needed a spark. I think we knew what this team was with Tanner at the helm. And you never want to see a guy like Tanner, a senior in his last year, get benched like that because he's a great kid. He's done nothing but work hard and do everything for this team. And it's tough to see, but it was the right move, in my opinion. This team needed a spark, and Zach came in and provided that. And I don't know that throwing the ball, he was 
all that much more effective than Tanner would have been in that game. But you rushed for over 280 yards. He made big plays with his legs. And it just, guys played harder. You said that across the board. The offensive line played harder. And was that a result of Zach Wilson being inserted? I don't know. But it provided this team with some kind of a spark. Our mystery guest is Dennis Pitta, and he is back with us on BYU Sports Nation. Such a great connection once again. Oh, he's mysterious. That's true. (laughs) Dennis, uh, (laughs) let's talk about the freshman connections that Zach Wilson has had, including one to Dallin Holker, who wears your old number, 32, and also a touchdown pass to Gunnar Romney. This is a very young addition of this BYU team and a ton of guys that are teenagers doing work for the Cougars. What do you think about the youth movement that Kalani Satake is dependent on now? Well, it's exciting, and it's nice to have a young core to really build from after this year. And so you talk about Gunnar Romney, highly recruited kid. I watched him a lot in high school. He's from Chandler, Arizona down here, and uh, he's incredibly talented. He was arguably the best receiver in, in Arizona last year, and so He's a guy that's going to get more and more comfortable. He missed all of training camp with an injury. And so you can see him kind of develop as the season progresses, getting more comfortable on the field. And that's a combination on the outside that we're going to see for a long time here. And then you talk about Dallin Holker. He's a guy who's played from day one. And I, I was out in Utah, I think, before the Arizona game and talking to some of the coaches. They were really high on Dallin Holker. And – Going into the season, you didn't think he was going to play that much because you have Matt Bushman, you have Moroni, you have all these guys in front of them that were key contributors in, in years past. And so you didn't really see a place for him on the field, but he's really carved a niche out in this offense and, and really been almost their best receiving threat at tight end. And so I'm excited to watch him. And, of course, he dons my old number, so I'm definitely rooting for him. And uh, it's just a great young core offense. It reminds me a lot of our, our young core back in the day with Matt, us, and myself. And then you couple that with, with Harvey Unga. And, and my question for this team is, where has Riley Burt been? Because when he was in the ball game, and you watched him run, he is more explosive, quicker, and just a better athlete than anybody else that we can put at running back. And we had some great runs this past game. We talk about um, what Coteau was able to do, uh, even Matt Hadley had some great runs in there. But you put Riley Burt in the game, and he was just a different, had a different gear to him, in my opinion. And, and I'm curious why he hasn't been on the field. I don't know if it's been injury or whatever. But I would like to see a whole lot more of him because I think he's a difference maker back there. Yesterday, Kalani Stocky was on the program, Dennis, and it, we, I asked about that. I said, uh, why doesn't Riley Burt play a little more? And he said, I'm not speaking about Riley specifically, but generally speaking, uh, you know, there's more to what you see on the field as to why a guy plays or whatnot. But I, I'm with you. I, I would love more Riley Burt. Let's end with this. Uh, Brett McMurphy of Watch Stadium uh, tweeted out some bowl projections, and he had BYU versus Virginia in the Independence Bowl. Would that be the best matchup for BYU in the postseason or what? I think it would. It's, uh, you know, for media members like you guys and myself, it's just a great storyline. We would love it, right? And so I think it would be a lot of fun. It would be it would be fitting to be able to play Bronco, to see that whole coaching staff, Coach Anunnaya, all those guys on the opposite sideline of BYU would be a lot of fun and a game that uh, I'd certainly be interested in watching. Dennis, have you made the full transition to a media member now? Yeah. You... <laughs> no, I was just trying to come down <laughs> to your guys' level and relate a little bit. Down from the NFL to You're college football. You're to work your audience a little bit, you know, and I was trying to kind of come down to your level and let you guys think that we're equals when we're really not. <laughs> we appreciate you playing down a level by coming on the show. You're welcome. Mystery guest. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, great to catch up with you, man, and uh, I'm sure we'll be doing it again soon. I, I, I don't know if we'll introduce you as a mystery guest next time, but you know we'll we'll try and work something out. I have days off occasionally. I, I think those would be great days to have you back on, Dennis. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was a huge mystery who was coming on. <laughs> <laughs> mystery, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, great to catch up, man. Hope you're well. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Dennis Pitta on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Wants more Riley Burt. I think everybody wants more Riley Burt. Why not? Like, what evidence there is there that Riley Burt shouldn't play on the field? Mm. 
Perhaps there's off the field things he needs to do better. You know, I, Kalani's inferring that. He didn't point it at Riley, but he said it right after Riley. Well, we're inferring that. I, Kalani's implying that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The difference between imply and infer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Coming up, is it a good idea for BYU to play Bronco Mendenhall's Virginia team in a bowl game? Plus, the BYU swim and dive team has a sparkling, shiny new pool to show up, yeah. and they gave Lauren McClain a tour in between the lines. How is the water temperature, Lauren? She'll All tell right. us coming right. up. This is BYU Sports Nation. Your first chance to get a look at this season's BYU men's basketball team is Friday with Cougar Tip-Off. It's on our digital platforms, BYU TV and BYUtv.org at 9 Eastern time. I feel strongly that we should keep it rolling, BYU Sports We'd Nation, rolling. with today's BYUSN headlines. BYU football in the midst of a bye week. We're going to get the win on Saturday? Following their victory over Hawaii... Last Saturday, head coach Kalani Sitake joined BYU Sports Nation yesterday in Studio B and laid out his very specific plan for the aforementioned bye week. And try to get stronger and better this week as well. Also get caught up in our academics. Um, but uh, this isn't just like time to just take off. We have to get to work, and we start with today. Listen, just do your homework and get healthy. I don't have any homework. The Cougars will host Northern Illinois and their next game, slated for October 27th, announced game time, 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 p.m. kickoff at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. College football reporter Brett McMurphy literally wrote this down, BYU versus Virginia in the Independence Bowl. That would feature BYU's last head coach against its current head coach. That would be awesome. Me likey. Jamal Williams had six rushes for 29 yards and a catch for 10 yards. A stiff arm for the ages against Richard Sherman. As the Green Bay Packers beat the San Francisco 49ers on Monday Night Football 33-30, Fred Warner playing for the 49ers had three solo tackles, four total. Packers next face the L.A. Rams in their next game, and the 49ers will play the Rams after a bye week, so in two it's, weeks. It's the Niners this week and the Rams, and then it's the Packers. Oh, and then it's the Packers. Now I got it reversed. All right. BYU women's volleyball remains number one in the ABCA coaches poll, following wins at San Francisco and Santa Clara. The Cougars host LMU and 7-1 and in league play Pepperdine. Thursday and Saturday, both on BYU TV and the app. Joining us now at Studio B is our weekly Between the Lines specialist, Lauren McLean. Lauren, welcome back. Thank Lauren. you very much. I'm a little offended that Dennis Pitta was on the show before me. After all that he's done to me, I should always be before Dennis. Not our call. He's all he's done to you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Transition to uh, the new pool after that. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the yeah. swim and dive team have a, have a new sweet pool. Awesome! And on Saturday, actually, forty nine of the athletes uh, place in the top five. Oh wow! And it was one of their first meets here at nice. the new pool. Very yeah, cool. so I'd never been there. There's a lot of new sweet changes. So the athletes themselves showed me the ins and outs of some of the new features and showed me some new tricks that I believe I could probably do myself mm. if I really tried. But let's go between the lines. Mm. BYU Sports Nation presents Between the Lines. Welcome to the Richards Building, or as the cool kids call it, the RB. After one year of construction, this brand new pool is finally finished. And we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look exclusively from the swimmers themselves. Let's go. So hi guys, I'm Peyton. This is our new pool. Our pool used to be 40 years old. It was pretty outdated. The gutters used to be about this high with a big gaping hole. And now they leveled it out so the water goes over and it reduces waves. So it makes swimming and competition a lot better. This is where we got all the good stuff. Hi, I'm Ryan Sorensen. I'm Maddie Zarchin. And this is our equipment room. These are our power towers. So you strap on these belts here around your waist and then you fill these up with water and then you swim with them. So when you take them off, you feel super fast. <laughs> we also have like bands, they're like giant rubber bands. You swim and then you turn around and swim back and it like pulls you really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. we try to do a lot of resistance training that applies directly to our regular strokes. Hey, how's it going? My name's Evan Berger. I'm a junior here at BYU Swimming. This balcony goes all the way around, so three sides for spectators. You can see from all angles. That's a lot more comfortable. It was a little bit packed before. Another thing I really like here is the new lighting. Before, the lighting was super yellow and dark. Now it's all bright and open. Uh, another thing that's super useful for us swimmers 
are these two video boards we have above the lifeguarding room. But the biggest improvement this pool has to offer is over here in the diving well. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm a sophomore diver at BYU. Okay, right now we're standing on the five meter platform, approximately 15 feet. A couple of fundamental things that we use in diving. One is our bubble system. When we learn new big dives, uh, it's kind of scary. So we like to use the bubbles. It helps break surface tension of the water. So if you smack or something bad happens, it doesn't really hurt as bad. And then finally, my favorite thing for diving is tack. We spray it like on our legs right before we do big dives. Um, that way we don't slip when we grab our legs. So I'm gonna hand it over to Nate. On the diving board, we have this yellow thing called a fulcrum. I don't know how to spell it. You can like put it right here on my palm. So what the fulcrum does is it makes the board tighter or looser, so it turns it from a plank or it can make it more like a trampoline. I like it really bouncy. I like the board really bouncy, so I make it really loose so I can jump higher and spin faster. Hand it off to Morgan. Uh, so I'm going to talk about two things that aren't super noticeable to others but are super important to divers, and it is our TV and our showers. And the TV is really cool because we have cameras around the facility that um, record our dives so we can watch them back and we can see our corrections. And then the showers are very important because we share the pool with the swimmers. They like it freezing and the divers like to be warm. So we have the showers to keep us warm and to keep our heart rates up and going. Sweet pool, but are you ready to get in it now? Yeah. Let's do this. That ain't happening. I really did want to get in. I really, <laughs> really did. Next week on Between the Lines, we're taking the show to Vegas. We're going to go to the WCC Media Days for men and women's basketball. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at BYU underscore BTL using the hashtag BYU BTL and on Instagram. Lauren, thank you so much. That was an outstanding look at the brand new pool. Yeah, thank it, you. and a lot of people waited a long time for that. They had a full season where they didn't have a home, if you will. Yeah, right? they, they were at Riverside. They had to go to the University of Utah, heaven forbid, for some yeah. different they things. They got to get up early, the so place. they had to get up even earlier to commute to those pools. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just brutal stuff, but so they well deserved it. that they had their brand new facility. Very they cool. love having Also, I want to point out uh, the elite baseball style t-shirt that you are wearing right now is Thank part of BYU's game day collection available right now in the BYU store. My favorite BYU logo. It's called, oh, it's called the Beat Digger. Yes, there the Cougar is. Beat Digger. I don't know why it's With called the Cougar that. Pod digging down into uh, the U on the BYU insignia. Yeah. Let's hope that BYU football does that on November 24th as well. <laughs> that would be great. Fingers crossed. The Beat Digger. Fingers Jordan crossed. High School. <laughs> okay, Thanks, coming Lauren. up, a look at what BYU's opponents did over the weekend. And is a bowl game against Bronco Mendenhall in Virginia a good idea for BYU? Yes. Tell me one bad idea. Can anybody come up with a bad idea? If you love it, let's do it. This is BYU Sports Nation. Kim Valley Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tuesdays at 8 Eastern, watch BYU football with Kalani Satake. This is Gregor Bell. Talks with Satake, a player and an assistant coach. No show today during the bye week, but the show returns next Tuesday at 8 Eastern on BYU TV, BYU Radio, and the apps. I can't think of a better time to do this than now during BYU football's bye week as we review what every other BYU football opponent has done to this point in the season and for some of them what they have immediately in front of them starting with BYU's next opponent Northern Illinois who is now 4 and 0 in the MAC all four of their wins have come against conference foes they have played a really difficult schedule including the likes of Utah Florida State and Iowa out of conference they took Utah to the wire they were tough against Iowa and Florida State, obviously struggling a little bit this year, but Northern Illinois, Illinois put up a good uh, effort against them as well. So BYU, this is 
I think, a very even matchup for BYU Northern Illinois when they come to Provo in a little under two weeks. Boise State's 4-2 and two after beating Nevada 31-27 uh, in Reno, thanks to 299 passing yards from quarterback Brett Rippon. UMass 2-5, and five, Jerem. Also, New Mexico State. We think that BYU should win those games. The Minutemen will be in Foxborough in November. You wonder if cold temperatures will come into play there. Yeah, New Mexico State uh, is 2-5 and five after a 66-38 loss to the Ragin' Cajun of uh, Louisiana. They gave up 66 to the Ragin' Cajuns. They've got BYU in Provo. Please, BYU, do some work against New Mexico State. How about Utah? They continue to roll. They beat up on Arizona in Salt Lake City on Friday night, 42-10. to The Utes led 28 nothing at half. They are now 4-2 and two and take on USC this weekend. BYU has some work to do before that Utah game. A lot of people think that the winner of the USC-Utah game will win the Pac-12 South. Oh, it's been a compelling race so far. Look back at what BYU's previous opponents have done. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Arizona already we mentioned Arizona, and lost yep, to Utah. Cal three and three, three straight losses. Thirty-seven uh, seven loss to zero and five. Uh, what? Yikes! Hey, UCLA. Cal is congratulations. You got your first yeah. win of the season. Yeah, Nebraska's like, how do you do that? So the Bruins are one and five. <laughs> but Cal, what happened to Cal? That was in Berkeley, thirty-seven to seven. I never thought Cal was that good. I thought they were going to be like a seven-win team. They started three and zero. Oh, they still could be a seven-win team. Unlikely now at this juncture, but three and three. We'll see. Wisconsin, the Badgers' seventeen-game Big Ten win streak came to a crashing halt at Michigan. Thirty-eight thirteen loss against the Wolverines. Granted, Michigan is now a top ten team. Wisconsin drops down to number twenty-four in the nation. They are four and two with the losses against the Wolverines and, of course, the BYU Cougars. I knew Wisconsin would lose a couple of games. I just didn't realize BYU would be one of them. Washington, the Huskies were one of four top 10 teams to lose over the weekend. Lost 30-27 at Autzen at Oregon in OT. The Huskies missed a field goal as time expired in regulation that would have won it. UW is 5-2. and two. That's a frustrating 5-2 and two for Washington, too, because uh, they could they be 7-0 and oh and in the top five. Very easily yeah. should be. They, I don't think they should have lost the game to Auburn to open up the season, and you make a kick against Oregon, and you're... T- now they're out of the playoff race. In bis- yes, they're out of the playoff. Two losses, you you are essentially out. Like, there's going to be enough one-loss teams that are going to be considered over a two-loss team. Well, and is any instances. team now in the Pac-12 going to be considered? Unless Alabama. Is any Pac-12 team going to be legitimately considered for the playoff? It depends on Notre Dame, too. Like, if Notre Dame's in, the Pac-12 is out for sure. And if Notre Dame is out, the Pac-12 is probably still out. It yeah. depends how things shake out, but not looking. The Pac-12 doesn't have a, a top-heavy team. That's an issue for them. How about the Utah State they Aggies? Expand. Who beat up on BYU 45-20 to on a Friday night, the first Friday night in October. They have won five in a row after a 59-28 drubbing of UNLV. Jordan Love tied a school record with five touchdown passes. Utah State 5-1 and one for the first time since 1978. They are seven spots out of the top 25 right now, receiving more votes than Utah. And fun fact... In one bowl projection set up I saw yesterday, Utah and Utah State. From Brett matched. McMurphy. Was it from Brett McMurphy? Mm-hmm. Oh, I couldn't remember if it was ESPN or Brett McMurphy. Utah, Utah State in the Las Vegas Bowl. Just don't go down 35 nothing if that's the case, Utah State, okay? Just a little advice. friendly advice. It's good advice. Okay? That wraps up our look back at all of this season's BYU football opponents. So seven games in. You would think right now, BYU 4-3, and three, they'll be heavy favorites against New Mexico State. And UMass. Where else can BYU get the seventh win? Obviously, Northern Illinois, which Northern Illinois. seems like a, I don't know, a pick 'em game at this juncture. And if BYU wants to do something we'll special, see. it's going to require a win against Boise State or Utah on both of those opponents' respective yeah. home fields. That one calls special eight wins, right? In the regular season. Eight wins. It'd be, it'd be really good. I'd, I'd like it. Special is like 14 and one season in 96. Like, I reserve that word for something that actually is special. Good, great. I guess I think we put them in the tiers of good, yeah. great, and special. To me, a good season is if you win eight. Like if you go eight and four, you win you know two thirds of your. Didn't we season. agree That's that going good. to a bowl game with this schedule would be a good season? Yes. Yeah. Yes, relative good based on the schedule. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So eight wins with this schedule oh, eight would be fantastic, for- given the way that BYU is kind of building towards the future. Yeah. Eight, eight and four against this schedule in the regular season, I think, would qualify as a great schedule because yeah. of the schedule. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our question not, of the day. I don't want to call great eight. I, I know. I know. <laughs> but Just me. Not all schedules created equal, though. So like, it, like it relatively speaking, for BYU. It fluctuates. No one outside of BYU would be like, that was great. Our question of the day. Would you want BYU to face Bronco Mendenhall in Virginia in a bowl game this season? Why? Who doesn't? Like, let's hear the nose. Yes, exactly. The nose? Let's go to the Twitter machine. Or, sorry, the, let's, let's go to the social media platforms with our voice of the nation. <laughs> this is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Dan underscore Smith for BYU in on Twitter. BYU can play in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl for all I care. Oh. Just make a bowl game first. I mean, maybe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anti-Boise per se, but... In December, Boise. Pretty cold, in December. man. December. Yeah. I'd rather go somewhere warm. I, I'm gonna be a tiny bit picky. I would. I want BYU to make a bowl. Dallas, game. Louisiana, yeah. the Bahamas, maybe. All sound fantastic. Let's see that one. It's Hawaii Bowl next year. We know that. Soda Cougar on Twitter. No, they're already on our schedule twice coming up. It's not for a while though, right? Yeah, I would rather play a team that BYU normally wouldn't see. Maybe Pittsburgh or Maryland or South Carolina. That's the question, Virginia. In 2021. 2021 and 2023. Okay. So it was twenty but it got moved out. back a couple of years because Bronco Mendenhall wanted to move back a couple of years. Coming up, Jamal Williams became a gif after stiff arming Richard Sherman's head like he was dribbling a basketball. No surprise, BYU women's volleyball still reigns supreme in the NCAA. That's coming up in the whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. Between the Lines is presented by Tim Daly Ford and the Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968. Shout out to today's guests, Dennis Pitta, who we absolutely had time for today, and Lauren McLean with Between the Lines. Miss any of the show, download the podcast, go to BYUSN.com to watch full episodes. Sorry to all of you, we had Dennis Pitta on. What? Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football. BYU football is a bye week this week, so does Northern Illinois, so the two teams will be extremely rusty or extremely prepared next Saturday, October 27th, when they play. Brett McMurphy projects BYU and Virginia in the Independence Bowl. He knows exactly what he's doing. Also putting Utah and Utah State in the Las Vegas Bowl. The match Cougars between... in the NFL. <laughs> oh, Bronco. I, I would love to BYU to take on Bronco. Jamal Williams rushed six times for 29 yards and had a 10-yard catch in the Green Bay Packers' 33-30 comeback win against Fred Fred Warner and the 49ers. Uh, Warner had four tackles, three solo on the night. Volleyball. The BYU women remain numero uno in the AVCA coaches poll for a fifth consecutive week following wins at San Francisco and Santa Clara. The ladies back home. They'll be tested this week against Pretty solid LMU team and second place Pepperdine on Saturday. Tennis. Vinicius Feijão Nogueira qualifies for the main draw in the ITA Mountain Regional Championships following two wins in the qualifying bracket. The main draw is currently being played as we speak. Today's rise and shout belongs to... Who should we give it to today, Jerem? I know who not to give it to. Oh, come on. Come <laughs> on. I want to give it to Brett McMurphy for uh, yeah, okay. giving us some fun on a Tuesday and a bye week. I was going to say, McMurphy is a, is a nominee. And also, BYU women's volleyball, since early September, has yeah. been ranked number one. They have shown Pretty no cool. signs of slowing down. A credit to them. Because when you're the number one team, the target's always on. Everyone wants yeah. to put their best foot forward. It's hard to maintain that ranking. So, well done. Pretty cool. BYU's still the number one team in women's mm-hmm. volleyball. Our question of the day. Would you want BYU to face Bronco Mendenhall? <clears throat> excuse me, Bronco Mendenhall in Virginia in a bowl game? Why? At Brent Robinson answers on Facebook. Too early to talk about bowl games. Take care of the games coming up. Don't look too far ahead, what? or you'll lose sight of the present game. Brent, are you on the team, man? Brent, there is no game this week, so this is the there's perfect no ga- time to look no at game. To a bowl yeah, game. This is there's no game. We- Wait, if we only looked at what was in front of us, what, what, what? stop it. Just to fill an hour. Stop whole, it. We're not on the team. Year. Brent, we love you weighing in, but come on. We're man. not on the team. We're all on the team. At Arizona MCC on Twitter. <laughs> well, Bronco is 6-6 six and six coaching in bowl games. Satake 1-0. If things continue to go well with Wilson, I'd like to see it. I Listen, we'll all be happy if BYU goes to a bowl game. That'll be a step forward. 
But once BYU clinches, now you can get a little picky. Like, ooh, yes. what, uh, uh-huh. what bowl game can we go? It's, it's not like BYU, BYU is a beggar in this case because uh, BYU doesn't have a contractual bowl game. It'll be like, well, ESPN, where do we fit best? Give us a good matchup. What conference didn't supply uh, an opponent for a game? Yeah. And you go to that one. BYU at some point was uh, projected to play in the Cheez-It Bowl, which, by the way, is a $3.5 million payout. It's pretty good. BYU would go to that one? That'd be awesome. Where, where is the Cheez-It Bowl? It's in Arizona. It used to be the Cactus Bowl. Oh, oh but the Arizona Bowl is still a thing, too? <laughs> Apparently. Is that the one in Tucson or the one at uh, I don't know. The Diamondback Stadium? The elite voice of the day, Diamondback Stadium, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, celebrating 50 years. It's not on the question of the day, but in response to the best usage of Jamal Williams' stiff arm of Richard Sherman, at Cougar Stats responded, probably Jerem Jordan trying to keep Dennis Pitta, the ball carrier, from taking his chair in Studio B. Dude, Dennis fouled me in pickup basketball in time and complained that he didn't think it was a call. Classic. Still happening. <laughs> Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYOS. And for Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Dallas Reynolds. Go Cougs.